Welcome to the Red Cloud Research Roundup, hosted by Red Cloud Financial Services. It's August 1st. Joining us from the Red Cloud Securities Research Team, mining analyst Taylor Combalusier is tapping in to share notable news from his coverage space this past week. We're later joined by David Talbot, Managing Director and Head of Equity Research. Taylor, why don't you kick us off this week? Hello, and thank you for the warm welcome. Welcome to episode 14 of Red Cloud Security's Research Roundup podcast. I'm Taylor Combalusier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud. We are pleased to join you today as part of an ongoing series of discussions with the Red Cloud research team. This week, I'll be speaking about Aris Gold Corp. We have a tender rating and $4 target. Aris Gold is a Red Cloud banking client. I'll also be speaking about GCM Mining Corp. We have a buy rating and 1675 target. Last week, GCM and Eris announced that they would merge in an all-share deal. The new company would be named Eris Gold Corp and would be led by Ian Telfer as chair and Neil Woodyear as CEO and director. GCM would own 74% of the new company and Eris Gold would own 26% on a diluted in-the-money basis. The transaction would require approval of at least two-thirds of Eris shareholders and half of GCM shareholders. Shareholder meetings are scheduled to take place in mid-September, and the closing of the transaction is expected shortly thereafter. All the directors and officers of GCM and ARIS have entered into binding voting support agreements. We view this transaction positively for both GCM Mining and ARIS Gold, as the larger combined company should be in a stronger position to advance its projects in the face of the current market environment and offer more opportunity over the long run for investors to realize a potential re-rating. We believe the market has consistently failed to recognize the value of GCM, given its consistent and robust operational performance at Segovia and the opportunity to grow its production profile with Toro Peru to over 450,000 ounces of gold per year by 2024. Additionally, the company has also replaced its mined resources at Segovia for six straight years and continues to have success with the drill bit, which supports our view that Segovia's main mines remain underexplored and are potentially larger than envisioned. We view this merger as an opportunity for this potential to be unlocked in the new Eris Gold. This deal is also positive for Eris Gold. Eris had outlined its vision to become a mid-tier gold producer and has a goal of reaching over 1 million ounces of gold production. We believe it is now well on the way to achieving this goal as we currently estimate production of 783,000 ounces of gold by 2026 from the new Eris Gold. This assumes a 50% ownership of Soto Norte. This transaction should also greatly improve the company's market profile as there were concerns around the cross ownership of Eris by GCM, which weighed on the trading liquidity of the stock. The deal would also eliminate US 45 million in intercompany debt that Eris owed to GCM. It would bolster Eris's financial position with US 657 million of cash and committed funding, of which 397 million would be in cash and reduce GNA expense with estimated savings of US $10 million annually. We expect this deal to close given the strong support of management and the positive reaction by the market to the transaction. GCM was up 9.7% and Eris was up 11.5% after the first day of trading post announcement. Over to you, Dave. Thank you, Taylor. I'm David Talbot, Managing Director and Head of Research at Red Cloud Securities. Now, last week, a couple companies we've been watching released very important drill results. The first one, Patriot Battery Metals, or PMET on the Venture Exchange, we do, do not rate the stock at this time, they announced assays from its first two summer drill holes. Now, the company is 16 holes into a program at its 100% owned Corvette Lithium program in Quebec. The best result returned 1.25% Li2O over 96.6 meters. And this helps extend the CV5 and CV6 pegmatites by another 500 meters to 900 meters worth of strike. Now, we're excited about this Corvette project where potential remains very high. Most of the property remains largely untested, let alone drill tested, despite the identification of at least 12 pegmatites. The CV5 and CV6 pegmatite outcrops have now been connected by drilling, and combined, this intrusive already shows considerable size and good grades. Recent assays were about 25% higher than the near 1% average that we currently estimate. There is plenty of room for strike and depth expansion, as it's only been tested to 225 meters vertical. 
and we note that zone width appears to be increasing significantly at depth. If we were to put dimensions on this, just 36 holes into the project this year, we'd estimate that the CV5 and CV6 pegmatite to measure about 2,000 meters long by 1,200 meters wide by 225 meters deep. Now, these dimensions are drill limited. We simply don't have enough holes along trend or any deeper, but the pegmatite remains wide open. That said, we believe this is already one of the largest lithium hard rock deposits on the planet. A third rig and a barge have been brought in to help accelerate drilling, and we anticipate further assays and metallurgical test results this summer as the summer progresses. And while it might be early, management's already considering the lower risk development route. It's considering production of a 6% Li2O bearing spodumene concentrate for sale to converters rather than producing lithium carbonate or lithium hydroxide. So stay tuned on Patriot Battery Metals. We can't wait to see the potential of some of its other pegmatites. Our second gem this week is Orion Resources. AU on the Venture Exchange. We rate the stock with a buy and a Canadian buck fifty target price. Orion released the final 12 holes of assays from its 2022 winter drill program on its 30% owned B2 Gold JV project in Finland. Drilling is currently about 6,500 meters through a 17,000 meter program for this year. The partners are testing an eight kilometer gold bearing trend starting just over a kilometer west of Rupert Resources' four million ounce of Ikari gold deposit. Now, assays were from six Helmi zone holes and six regional holes, and in both accounts were very successful in advancing the project and, and its understanding. The Helmi zone was extended up and down dip and strike increased by about 150 meters to the west, so the zone measures about 1,000 meters long. Assays include 1.46 grams per ton gold over 33 meters and 2.11 grams per ton over 21.7 meters. What management is noticing now is that this deposit is made up of at least four high-grade, ductile, on-echelon and stacked ore shoots. Mineralization isn't continuous for the entire 1,000 meters. The stacked shoots appear to be plunging to the northwest, stacked one upon each other, and appear quite similar to the nearby Akari deposit. What is also important here is that all drill holes were targeted this zone before assays were provided and before high-grade shoots were identified. Now that management has started to figure out controls on mineralization, we believe further drilling should be much better targeted. Thus, we'd expect better hit rates and an overall improvement in assays should management be correct in its assumptions. The next goal at Helmi is to find additional high-grade shoots and to trace the four known shoots to depth. Regional drilling on the JV property was also successful. Gold was discovered within three holes over 500 meters east-west. They're located 950 meters and 1,250 meters west-northwest of the Helmi Gold Zone. Assays include up to 5.7 grams per ton gold over 2 meters and 1.64 grams per ton over 5.2 meters. Now, it's too early to tie these intercepts together, and they may or may not represent a new trend that runs parallel to Helmi itself. So what is almost as important as the gold discovery itself is that gold mineralization crosses geological domain boundaries. Not only was gold within mafric and ultramafic rocks like at Helmi, but gold extended into sediments to the south, sandstones and conglomerates. Now, this ultramafic sediment contact extends for eight kilometers on the property and at least 15 kilometers on the 100% owned properties nearby. But drilling has never tested both rock types at the same time, and this opens the door for extensive new areas worthy of gold exploration, both on the JV property and on the 100% owned properties. So we see this as great news from Orion. Management has started to figure out controls on mineralization and may be able to take what they have learned and apply it towards making further discoveries. Regional geophysics and base of till sampling programs should also help to that end as drilling programs continue or start up on neighboring properties. So that is all for Red Cloud Research this week. I'm David Talbot. Thank you for turning in. Thanks for listening to the Red Cloud Research Roundup. We hope that you enjoyed the dive into recent notable mining news. 
Remember, you can join us every Monday for new episodes. And as always, you can head over to redcloudsecurities.com for full disclosures and to sign up for our email list. That's it for this episode and see you next time.